How's it going guys? Today we're going to talk about the second part of this continuity, which is the essential discontinuity. Now the essential discontinuity has two different discontinuities inside them. So I'm just going to talk about the first one in the next video. I'm going to talk about the second one. So first of all, let's go with the definition of what an essential discontinuity is. So it starts with let, oops, there you go. Let f be a function such that the limit when x approaches c from the right of f of x is not equal to the limit when x approaches c from the left of f of x. Then c is called an essential discontinuity. Okay, So basically, when the limits are different, that's when we have an essential discontinuity. Okay? In the previous video, we talked about removable discontinuity, which the limits were equal. But at the point, it was, the function was not equal to evaluate it at the point to the limit. And this discontinuity is when we have different limits from the left and from the right. In other, in other words, the limit does not exist. So when the limit does not exist, we call it essential discontinuity. Now, the first part of the essential is called the jump discontinuity. Okay? And then... For the definition of the jump discontinuity, you have all this mumbo jumbo that I'm going to explain carefully. So it said, let f be a function such that. Notice the ors here. These are three different conditions to have a jump discontinuity. Now I'm going to talk about this one, in, in, uh, the first one specifically. So it says, the limit when x approaches to the right of f of x is less than infinity. What does that mean? What kind of notation does that express? Whenever you have this right here, less than infinity, it, it means that it's finite, okay? It means that's a real number. So, and in mathematics, whenever you see something that's less than infinity, it's just saying that it's finite, okay? So there's a fixed, so it has a number, call it, any constant, okay? So it says, when the limit of x approaches c from the right is, is finite, or meaning it has, a, it has a value, not equal to the limit when x approaches c from the left, which is equal to f of c, okay? So how would that look like geometrically or graphically? It will look like this right here. Notice that this one, this value here, oh, I guess I have to change the layers again. There it is. Okay. Um, this value here is this one. It's the first limit from the left. Oh, I mean from the right. So for this example, I'm actually using the second condition. That if x is approaching c from the left, it's a finite value and it's not equal when the limit approaches c from the right, which is equal to f of c. So if we approach c from the left, notice that it approaches this value. Let's call it, I don't know, a or uh, l, m, m. Let's call it m, capital M, okay? Now, if we approach C from the right, it approaches this value. Let's call it N. Okay? And then notice that F of C is also equal to N. So this example is the second condition, which is the limit when X approaches C of F of A is M. So the limit when x approaches c from the left of f of x is equal to some m, which is not equal, so it's not equal to the limit when x approaches c from the right of f of x, which is equal to f of c, okay? Which is equal to n, okay? So, all of that, all of this mumbo-jumbo is what it's the definition of, 
a jump discontinuity. And again, just like I said in the previous video, names are very important in math. So jump discontinuity will tell you that there's a jump, right? A, a, a break between the functions. That's what, that's the first type of essential discontinuity. Notice that the limits are not the same, but there is a breakage, okay? So that breaking up makes it a first, a discontinuity, second, an essential discontinuity, and third, a jump discontinuity, okay? That's the, the hierarchy, okay? So that's the one example. Now, the third example is when all of them are different. So the limit from the left is not, e <clears throat> sorry, is not equal to the limit from the right, which is not equal to f of c. And, and again, these two limits are finite. So there's a specific value to them. They're just not equal to each other, okay? Now, let me give you another example. A piecewise function, right? Always. So, just by looking at it, where do you think we're going to have a discontinuity? If, if we do. Well, it's either at 0 or at 1. So, to check 0, we have to do the, the, the same thing we have done so far, which is the limit from the left, from the right, and at the point. So, let's try with 0. So, the limit... When x approaches 0 from the left, of f of x is what? Well, if it's from the left, that means that x is less than 0. So I'm approaching to this function, 2x plus 1. Now, that is equal to what? Well, if I plug in 0, I get 2 times 0 plus 1, which is 1. Okay. Now, we do the same thing with the limit when x approaches 0 from the right. From the right, it means that it's greater than 0. So notice that is the function, the constant function 1, which is just 1. Okay, This is also 1. And then at f of 0 is where the, inequal or the equality is, in this case, at 2x plus 1. So it's 2 times 0 plus 1, which is 1. Okay, so notice that all three are equal. Therefore, is what? It's continuous at zero. So this function, so f, is continuous at c equals zero. Okay? Now let's check at one, doing the same procedure. So the limit, when x approaches, one from the left. Now, if it's approaching one from the left, it means that x is less than one. So which one of the, the two is that? Well, the first, the second one, right? It's one. This is just one. Now, whenever we take, now we're gonna take the limit when x approaches one from the right. If I'm approaching one from the right, I'm approaching when x is greater than one, which is gonna be the second one, I mean the third one. So it's x squared plus 1, which is 1 squared plus 1, which is 2. Okay? And f of 1 is wherever it's defined or is equal. Notice the equality sign here. It's 1. So notice that these two are not equal. So the limit from the left is not equal to the limit from the right. But the limit from the left is equal to what? F of 1. So this is which one of the conditions? It's the first one. Is that the limit from the left is equal to F of... I mean, is it the first one? Let me double check that. Oh, yeah. It's the first one. I just wrote it in this side. So approaching from the left is equal to F of C but it's not equal to approaching from the right. So that's exactly what happened at 1. Therefore, this, so f, given this, f is a jump discontinuity this 
at c equals to 1, okay? And this is the graph. So you can see visually how it looks like. Notice that the jump is at 1, okay? Notice that at 0, it's continuous, right? There's no holes, there's no gaps, there's nothing. It's completely continuous at 0. But at 1, it jumps from 1 all the way to 2. So that's a jump discontinuity. Uh, this is the end for this video. Tomorrow I'm going to uh, explain the essential discontinuity for infinite uh, an infinite discontinuity. So that's going to be the second part. Um, so I hope you like the, the video. Share with your friends. Comment below. And all that jazz. Have a good day, guys.